Hey, what's going on, guys and girls? Any pride here with Milk and Cookies Total War? Joined by a guest commentator. 50 bomb, as usual, hey. Yeah, if you guys haven't figured it out by now, I don't enjoy commentating by myself as much as I do with other people. So, since 50 bomb is basically the only person I play Total War with, he'll That's be on nice most to of be loved. videos. Yeah, there we go. Uh, <laughs> just so you guys understand how dedicated I am to this channel. I have a stomachache right now, and I'm still going to be recording YouTube videos for you guys. So, just keep that I in mind that. when you're liking and favoriting all my YouTube videos. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> today, we're going to be bringing you a 2v2 Mastodon and Galatia versus Egypt and Bowie. This was a very interesting, very close battle, so I definitely recommend you guys stay till the end to watch all of it. But we're going to get into it right now. Press play. My Macedonian army is very focused on rushing, so basically what I'm going to be doing is going to be using these four Aspis Companion Cav to kind of control the cavalry engagement. Going into this battle, we definitely assume we're going to have the cavalry advantage. And uh, then I have some Hoplites, one Thracian Peltast, and then a bunch of Thorax Swordsmen. So, what's your game plan over here with Galatia? Uh, well, I'm, I'm in love with these Galatian Raiders. I reckon they're some of the best cav in the game. Like, obviously not melee stats, but... Very handy unit, so I got three of those, uh, four Galatian Spears, two uh, Galatian Noblemen, which are the, the best spears, uh, four Galatian Legionnaires, and two Noble Horse. And so basically, I, I was going to support you this game. Uh, I, we didn't realize that huge hill would be there, so obviously right from the start we were like, okay, well, we're just not going to attack Egypt at all. So our focus shifted to boy, didn't it? Yes. Basically, the plan here was, I saw Egypt, and I'm like, hell no, am I attacking up the hill? It's impossible. There's no point. And actually, our opponents were not friends, so they weren't really communicating probably as well as we were, because obviously we were on a Skype call. So I was like, hey, let's double-team Bowie right now. This should be easy to overwhelm him. But the problem is, he has five heavy horse, and... These guys are not the cream of the crop melee cavalry, so, like they won't be noble horse 1v1, but they last for forever, they have high armor, high defense values, so they're going to be in the fight for a very long time. And you're going to commit your Galatian Raiders here because you thought you saw an opening, correct? Yeah, well, I believe at this point we just said go, 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 we can catch them, we can wrap them up and, and finish them. So Galatian Raiders obviously are a bit, a bit quicker than my noble horse, so I could tie them down, and that's literally what I was trying to do here and then get the noble horse in to start the killing but it, it doesn't go well it does not go well i've got two spears coming up behind to support so i really thought with those you know noble horse and the spears and glacier raiders here um we could actually take this fight but yeah it, it goes sour pretty quick actually yeah so these axe warriors and a bunch of spear units are going to come in from what with the bowie from behind and uh, get into the back of these Noble Horse and these Galatian Raiders. And the Cav fight's already starting to turn in their favor. I did manage to get two of my Aspis Companion Cav around behind and get a rear charge off, which I thought would completely turn the outcome of this Cav fight, because although your Galatian Raiders are obviously going to die very quickly, Aspis Companion Cav, rear charge into Heavy Horse, you would think would turn that very quickly. The problem is your General, your Noble Horse, is going to die basically right off the bat from those Axe Warriors. I yep. think... Most of that was due to the fact that the Axe Warriors have very high armor piercing, and so when they got that rear charge off, they basically just shredded them, and your yep. general's already routed off the field so that you've got that morale penalty going against you. And what yep. did look like a really good cav engagement for us is actually not going as well as probably we wanted it to. Yeah. Now, the uh, infantry engagement is starting in the middle here, and basically we're just trying to tie down the Osworn and some of the, like, the heavy-duty infantry units from the Bowie so that we can clear up this cav fight, but... There's a bunch of Bowie units in the middle here that he actually committed and didn't... I guess he forgot to click an attack order. I'm not exactly sure what the deal was there, but these Osworn actually aren't in the fight yet, which is a problem for him. Yeah, and lucky for us, actually. But I, I do think he was clicking an attack order on my Noble Horse, and then because they routed, they just sat there and they're like, um, yep, okay. And then, yeah, Miss Michael didn't click another attack order. But, yeah, so all of my calves gone. Uh, both Noble... Uh, ra uh, both Galatian Raiders and my uh, Noble Horse all routed and shattered completely, except this one unit coming back here. But uh, your your Aspis Companion Cav really does hold its own really well. <laughs> yeah, they're they're I mean they're shredding stuff right now Amazing. for sure. Um, yeah. Now what I would have liked to have done here is committed all of my Aspis. The problem was that he had 
Egypt had these two chariots, which if you leave them unchecked people. without any cavalry to counter them, you're going to be in really big trouble. And so I had to keep cavalry near my lines and some of your infantry, Galatian legionnaires and such, uh, so that they couldn't just run roughshod over the infantry engagement. So I kept these Aspis companion cav. Maybe we would have been able to turn this cav fight sooner if I'd had more Aspis. Unfortunately, we weren't able to. And uh, he hasn't actually committed his chariots yet, so my Aspis haven't really made any impact over on this side of the battle. And that's kind of an issue for us. Yeah, but we're just pulling back against the Egypt horde, really, aren't we? We're just we're really trying to tidy up these last couple of boy units. Uh, we've we tied up those. Um, I mean, we cleaned up those couple of infantry in the middle there, and it's just these two O sworn over on the right now that we're trying to focus on before worrying about Egypt. Yeah. But uh, his chariots are coming now, so we're going to have to start reacting. Yeah, it's at this point that I was like, okay, the chariots haven't shown up yet. They are actually starting to move now towards the infantry engagement, but I decided that we needed to kill this wing before we could do anything else. And so I've committed all of my Aspis now, trying to kill these Osworn, and we should be able to. We have them completely surrounded, but as you guys know, Osworn, they stand and fight for a very <laughs> long time. So even though they're completely surrounded at this point, we actually aren't able to kill them as quickly as we'd like. But I did take one of my Aspis companion cap out of there and a hoplite unit and committed them to the chariot so killing those is going to be a really huge deal because that's a lot of talent spent on these two units right here and if i can shut them down early it's going to be really big for us they have 107 kills but they were on like cheap spear units i think maybe one galatian, Legion galatian legionnaire but yeah. uh regardless they did not make the impact they would have liked to and you can see how fast they get shredded when they get tied down by heavy melee cav and spears yeah and having the jab in there actually as well would have would have made a huge um, difference but as, uh, as you know you need to tie them down first and that is it's not always an easy task because people can if they've got good micro just pull them through and keep on running yeah. but you know, we, we did a good job there actually yeah it was a mistake for him to commit them to where he did next to a spear and a cab unit yeah but sure. regardless we took them off the field and then we quickly pulled out and again committed the rest of our forces to these Bowie units who have not yet routed. It's kind of ridiculous how long they've been fighting for now. Because yeah. we committed basically two armies, uh, maybe one and a half armies, but we committed a lot of troops to trying to kill them, and we just haven't been able to do it yet. And he kept having units come back that were wavering before or routed, and then he committed them back once they came back from the fight. And finally, we're going to get most of these Bowie units off the field, and we finally wrapped up that flank, but it just took absolutely forever. So, yep. getting shot a little bit by the Rodian Slingers, and we're just like, okay, time to reset the situation, pull out, regroup, and figure out what we want to do from there. Yeah, and over on the left here, um, he's got some Egyptian infantry that got isolated, and as you may know, Egyptian infantry are terrible, like one of the lowest tier um, swords in the game, so even against my Galatian Spears, they're actually losing qu quite badly. So we're just going to um, wrap them up, try and route them as quick as possible again. And that's basically going to be our game plan from here. We're just going to try and route as much as we can in like small engagements. Yeah, yeah. Uh, basically, <laughs> yeah, Fish Sandwich Patrol, for those of you guys who remember him from a very long time ago, Shogun Two Days, uh, he likes to just say that what he would do is just wrap it up into small engagements and, and just break off an army into chunks. And whenever he saw chunks, just focus on that small portion of the enemy army, surround it, route it, and then move on to the next portion. And that's exactly what we're going to be trying to do here. So committing the Aspis Companion Cav into melee against Thorax Swordsman and some Egyptian infantry. Again, I think he left this flank a little bit too exposed. He could have supported them a little bit better. But Egypt actually didn't have any cavalry besides the side of the chariots this game, correct? Yeah, yeah, I do believe so. So it was kind of hard for him to support his uh, melee troops with cavalry because he didn't have any. He, uh, Bowie is going to send a half-strength Osworn into melee as well, but again, this this whole section right here is so, so isolated so that it shouldn't isolated, be too hard. Yeah. Yeah. And then on the right, we're just pulling back and not engaging. We yeah, would be foolish to engage. We want absolutely nothing to do with this section right now. We're just going to be pulling yep. those units away and trying our best to surround. But that surround isn't going to come quite yet. We first have to wrap up this side of the battle. Yeah. So just going to be a melee grind right now. Aspis Companion Cav, of course, that's exactly what they're good for. Get them in a in sustained melee combat, and there aren't a whole lot of units in the game that can stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with them. 
How much did that cost, by the way? Is it like twelve hundred or something? It's like twelve eighty or something like that. Thirteen hundred, maybe. So no, it's a lot. But it's I mean, thirteen eighty talents, yeah, I think is what it is. Oh, they're absolutely worth it. If you use yeah, them yeah, effectively, yeah. they're gonna get like two hundred kills plus every single time. How much do yours have at the moment? One fifteen. Not good enough. Well, it, dep it also depends if you're in cat, because some of those we're only using a cat fight, and of course, yeah, yeah, the kill rates on those will be much lower. So again. Aspis Companion Cab into Egyptian Infantry. Not gonna be fun for them. <laughs> yeah, these Aspis oh, right yeah. here are gonna have a field day with these guys. And I do love the new uh, horse crown that these guys have. The Battery Noble Horse and some of the other cavalry units in the game got a visual upgrade from CA. And that guy just got kicked in the face by a horse. That was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever seen that killing animation before? No, I have not. Yeah, the That's horse awesome. just kicks him in the face. It's hilarious. Oh, wow. Some of these are brutal. Yeah, there are actually a ton of killing animations in this game that you barely ever see, but when you do, it's pretty awesome to watch. Worth it. Yeah. Alright, so that wing is basically wrapped up now, and again, we're going to want to just uh, reset the situation, basically. So, we have the beginnings of a perfect surround at the moment. Yep. And, yeah, no, it's looking good, but um, as we identify when we watch this again, Indy, all our guys are exhausted by this point in the battle. So that is actually going to be a huge factor. And we didn't really uh, take it into account so much when we when we were actually playing at the time. You are sort of like, oh yeah, we're exhausted, whatever. Just commit but, your troops, whatever. They, yeah. They'll fight the same way, but they don't. When your troops are this tired, it, it doesn't work that way. Like you, in a situation like this, and we'll talk about it more after this. Actually, you know what, I'll just save that point for after this battle. Remind me to talk about exhaustion and how it impacts things, but <laughs> yep. let's see how this develops first. So, we do have the beginnings of our surround here, we have the cavalry advantage. What he has left is two royal peltasts, I believe three thorax swordsmen, and then four rhodian slingers, but they're all full strength and they're all fresh or winded at the most. Yeah. And so, we have troops right here, we have troops right here, and then I'm gonna flank my cavalry out to the wing right here, and send them in and then the melee engagement is going to come from this side so we have them completely surrounded like this is exactly what you want the problem is that these troops are all fresh and they haven't seen much battle at all yet and we haven't really uh we have been fighting for basically this entire time yeah. so so i'm sending in my spears first just the i thought he'd counter charge he, he sort of gets one off but yeah i just thought my spears are so depleted anyway i just take take the charge for Indy and hope that his swords would then be able to, you know, do a bit of good killing, but the fresh royal peltas bursting like tired hoplites and and thorax swordsmen, it's it was it probably wasn't never gonna end very well. But yeah. we did think the surround would be enough at this point. And we really do have them good and surrounded at this point. The issue here though is that the killing power is with these royal peltas and they're absolutely shredding stuff at the moment and we don't have any units that are actually going to hit them in the rear and if we had been able yeah. to route his general it would have been absolutely fantastic for us maybe turn the tide of battle right here you look at the balance bar and you'd say like why is it so far in their favor like we have them surrounded there are as many units on the field for our side as there are for them but again they're full strength and so yeah. I don't have a lot of swords left, I only have like hoplites and maybe like a half-strength royal peltas left. And cutting through this many fresh troops is extremely difficult, so... Yeah. You'll, you'll even see it with my Aspis Companion Cav. I got them directly into Mercenary Rodian Slingers, and they're taking a while to kill them. Just because they're exhausted. Yeah. Although, 350 kills and 214, I mean, you <laughs> can't complain too much, no, really. Yeah, but... I, was, I was perfectly happy with how my Aspis Companion Cav did this fight. They did fantastic. Yeah but it's turning really far in their favor at this point and yes. even though we surrounded them and i remember it like you wrote in the comments or we like we were talking in skype you're like if we lose this battle there's something very wrong with this game yeah and i think we just didn't take into account the uh dramatic effects exhaustion, of the exhaustion would take, yeah would take in, into yeah. effect yeah it was it was a big deal so what I think we should have done differently in this fight as we get a couple more close-ups. We didn't have to engage. Now, we could have just sat in the forest and let the Rodian Singer shoot at us, which may or may not have been a good idea. I don't know the kind of killing power they have on units that have already taken 
that many losses if you're in the trees. But looking back on it, I think I would have just decided to sat there, or sit there and take the Rodian Slingers, but hope that he doesn't attack me. Because if we've been able to get our guys to like winded status, yeah, that melee fight might have gone differently. I'm not sure. Definitely, I reckon we should at least have just retreated out of range and made him either sit there as well or make a move, and just because uh, yeah, as you, as you say, it was it was completely beneficial for us to sit and not do anything for at least a bit of time while we regathered our wind and that. And, and yeah, and if he had made a move as well, there could have been chances for more isolation and surrounds and like on a smaller scale. But um, yeah, we're just a bit impatient there, I think. And yeah, we got punished for it. But I, I think we in did. Total War, and like especially uh, when we play, like we put a lot of stock into completely surrounding opponents. Like when you get a, that perfect surround off, which I think that was about as close to a perfect surround as you can get. Yeah. In total war, you just expect to win, no matter yeah. like what the quality of their troops are. Like if you have decent quality troops and you have your enemies surrounded like that, you just expect to win. And so, I mean, we were both very surprised when we got that kind of surround off and lost. But yeah. I think that ultimately, watching the replay again, it makes sense why we did. It was just that all of our guys were exhausted. All of them had been fighting for like ten, twelve minutes, whereas those Egyptian melee troops had not seen any melee combat whatsoever. We're all full strength. We're barely even winded. So it's just mm. how it ended up turning out, I guess. Yeah. Was that, is that what you wanted to say about exhaustion? Or was there yeah. something else? Yeah, that's what I wanted okay, to say. Okay, that's good. Yeah, no, we actually killed more than them. We got uh, four or five hundred odd more kills in their team. Than, but it just, yeah, <laughs> that morale, man. The, the battle no really, riders. yeah, the, the battle really, really turned, though, when we just committed so much to Bowie and couldn't rot them off the field ASAP. Like, the amount of troops we committed to them and the surround we got off in the calf fight, we expected to be able to just run them over, and we didn't, and we lost a lot of guys and lost a lot of endurance in the melee fight, and that's ultimately what lost us the battle. Yeah, I, th I actually personally think it, it was a bit of us getting sort of stuck in that Shogun 2 mindset. Like, I think in Shogun 2, they would have routed a lot quicker than they did in that game, and maybe because, you know, we're still sort of getting back in the Rome 2 swing of things that maybe we just sort of underestimate it on that sort of scale like we're like mm -hmm. oh yeah if we if we surround them hit them like this they'll they'll route sweet and then we'll run away but they just they just held and it, yeah it cost us probably i would say yeah your your cavalry i really didn't do anything like <laughs> at all horrendous yeah <laughs> like you expect noble horse to shred heavy horse because that's yeah. th they they cost what like 400 talents more something yeah, like that yeah like, they are the elite tier barbarian cavalry where heavy horse is, like, mid-tier. With 20 kills. <laughs> yeah, so they, yeah. Well. Now, and it was because he overlapped with his infantry engagement and then brought them in from behind your cav. And I think you, basically, your cavalry engagement just could have been better. I think, yep. I think engaging the Galatian Raiders right away, probably just to catch the heavy horse, might not have been the best bet. Mm. Uh, well, even though I understand the point of it, to catch them and yeah. kill them quickly, we just weren't able to. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, I was going to say, it was, it's the right idea, but <laughs> the execution was, yeah, average at best. The Galatian noblemen did really well. Your Galatian legionaries did very well also. Yeah. Just so many units to cut through. <sighs> Can you think oh. of anything else you want to say about that battle? We suck. <laughs> Get fully surrounded and you win this game. Yeah, that's how yeah. it goes. <laughs> it's a new theory. Yeah, it's, uh, it actually has happened that way quite a few times in the past two weeks or so. Uh, you saw it in that li live commentary I posted uh, maybe a week or two weeks ago. We perfectly surrounded them again. It was Rome, right? We yep. were fighting against Rome, yep. and we just lost in that live yep. commentary as well. And then we got surrounded by Parthia, but we won. <laughs> yeah, yeah. you saw that in the last commentary around. I posted. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. So let yourself get surrounded and win in Rome too, I guess, is the new, <laughs> the new meta. Yeah. Oh, God, that's so stupid. Um, oh, well. well, it was a fun battle. Definitely learned yeah. something from it. And uh, it was very close and enjoyed it a lot. So hope you guys did too. And we'll be bringing you some more content relatively soon here. So I'll talk to you all later. Peace out.